Oopsie daisy. Just click this off. Okay, are you? Hopefully that's working. Hard to on silent. I'll just wait for the first VI. Yeah, this looks so cold. <laughs> this is Anton. He's been eating lots. Oh, there we go. We've got our first person watching. Hello, and it is. I think it's Sophie. Hi. So good morning to Sophie. Okay, right, I'll actually get comfy in your seat. Excellent. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all well. Happy Monday. It's Infant Day with Mrs Cochrane today. This is normally when I teach primary one, two and three, so we are going to continue down that road at home. So good morning to you all. Thank you for returning and good morning to anyone that's maybe joining us that are new to our art lessons. So today's art lesson is one of my favourite and I always do it at this time of year. Okay, and it ties in beautifully if you are doing a topic such as living things or if you're doing a project maybe on the senses, so maybe on your eyesight and mixing colours. Good morning, Sophie. Um, it's also great because it involves a little bit of one of my favourite things to do, which is printmaking. That's actually what I did when I was at university a long time ago. So it involves something that I love doing as well. Also, Abernethy Primary School, with these guys, they've been set a special challenge this week from the beautiful Mrs Hardy, and they have to do a printmaking activity of their choice. So this is great because it's also ticking that box for us at home, because this after this lesson today, we'll both have completed something that we can give to Mrs Hardy for her artwork as well. So Alex is actually here to both heart this morning for the exact reason, okay? So it's got a little bit of colour mixing and then it's got a little bit of printing at the end. As per usual, however, you can opt in or out or you can adapt this lesson in any way you want. Right, let's get cracking because we've got quite a few watching this morning. So, oh, Alex is wanting to show you the finished example. I had to cut it out. It was on a big sheet of paper, but um, after I finished doing it yesterday, Miss Mirren appeared and started splodging all around the background, so I've actually had to cut it out. I quite like to like it cut out, so you might even want to do that as well. Right, I think you can... Okay. <laughs> right. right, let's get started. So, in this little pot here, we have got some chalk pastels. If you don't have chalk pastels, chalks will be fine. And we are using the primary colours, first of all, which are... Oh, right, okay, red, okay. yellow and blue. Red, yellow and blue. Hi, so do you know that? Excellent. Right, so we are going to start off by creating the first part of our caterpillar. Good morning, Miss Siki. I hope you're well. I've not spoken to you for a few days. Hope you're doing good. So I'm going to start off by using one of my chalks. So boys, help yourselves. And what I want you to do, somewhere on your page, is just draw an oval shape. And then you're going to colour fill that in. Okay, now you're going to have to fit at least six of these in. So I would say you want it to be about the same size as your fist. So if you make a punch, string your fist like that. You want it to be about that size. Okay, because you're gonna have to fit about six of these in. Now it's up to you, you can have it straight. Excellent, hard to start already. Now you can have it straight or you can have it wiggling along the page. It's up to you. So I'm just gonna start off by drawing a fist shape. Oh, okay. that's a bit too bad. And then, I'm going to colour it in with my yellow. So we're just doing the primary colours first. Now we are using chalks today, which as you know, I might have spoken about this in the past, they are the messiest thing in the art room. They're very, very, very dusty. They create a lot of mess. They are far, far, far messier than paint, paint is. So be really careful with the chalk. Sit up nice and tall in your seat. If you want to be a proper artist, stand up. If you need to get something from across the table, ask to have it past you, don't slouch over to get it. And just just, just have a good, good posture, good posture when you're doing this. So you're doing something like this. Now, it will get quite dusty, so what I would do is just tap the chalk dust onto the table, which hopefully you've put a messy mat down for. If you haven't, I should have said that at the beginning. Also, if you're wearing a really, really good t-shirt right now, go and get changed and put something a bit scruffy on. Or roll your sleeves up. Or roll, uh, yeah, pull your sleeves up as well. So pull your sleeves up, sit up nice and tall in your chair, make sure the table's covered, and make sure you are not wearing your wow, best, best clothes. 
big explosion for us. Oh, that's just done. Right, also cutting these out at the end is great because you might find that you end up with quite a lot of fingerprints around the background. So if you cut it out once it's dry, that gets rid of all that, that banishes all that. Because um, I'm looking at Alex's right now and he's smushed it quite a bit. Yeah, it's a right, bit so I've done my yellow oval. Next up what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the colour of my chalk. I'm going to go with my blue now. So mm -hmm. next to that I'm going to draw another oval shape, this time exactly the same size. Now if you are, just looking at Harris and I'm thinking about something, Harris is left-handed, I'm right-handed and Sophie, I think you're a left-handed if I remember. So if you are a right-handed person, you're probably going to want to work from left to right across the page so then you don't smudge it. Harris, you're a lefty, so do you know what I'm going to do? Lift up. I'm going to turn yours that way, because that can now be a bum. <laughs> okay, you can actually put in another one there if you want. It just means then you're not leaning on it and smudging. Okay, I was just thinking about that there. Okay, so again, you want another oval shape and just blocking some colour with the blue. Now, some people hate chalk. Who could I be talking about here? Mm, someone hates chalk that's watching right now. If you don't like chalk, get yourself maybe a pair of gloves to wear, maybe some rubber gloves to wear, yeah. or get a bit of a bit of paper and wrap it in the chalk, and that'll stop yeah. that that feeling. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that's great. Because remember what the caterpillar gets when it eats lots of food. Well, if it's too big, just smudge it. If you don't like powder, just rub it out. Just make it a wee bit. Yeah, just rub it out. Ah, that's actually you can get baby wipes. Oh, yeah. Maybe some baby wipes might be a good thing as well. Yes, it is you, Vicky. Right, so just fill in. Um, so if you don't like the feeling of chalk, get a bit of cotton wool even to blend this in if you want, or you can use your fingers just to get the colour in. Um, it should be in the top drawer. Yeah. yeah. Baby wipes are great for getting sort of mucky hands. I just rub them together most of the time, but if you do make a mistake like Harris has done, he's not happy with that, you could go and get a baby wipe or something wet just to wipe that chalk off. Sometimes people, I see people trying to rub it out, but it just becomes like a big sort of smeary mess on the page. So if you do make a mistake or you want to get rid of any fingerprints, a wee baby wipe's always good. So what we can do now is just wipe that away. Okay. There you go. Try Alex, you'll sure. Yeah. Alex did, we did space scenes last week, primary four to seven, so Alex is a bit of a pro now with the chalks. <laughs> In fact, you're a bit of a pro with the chalks as well. You had a go of doing a space scene once we were finished, didn't you? <laughs> okay, so we've got two on the go now. I'm talking too much again. I'm now going to go with the red because Hans has already started with his third one, so I better catch up. You're speeding ahead, mister. <laughs> okay, so we've got our three primary colour ovals which has started the base of our caterpillar. And if you don't know much about colour mixing, this next bit's really, really good fun. Okay, so I've left lots of space for three. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose one of my colours. And this time, I'm not going to really, really, really go for it with the colour. I'm just going to lightly patch the yellow in. I'll leave some spaces. Okay, so I'm just going to almost wiggle that chalk in it. Then what I'm going to do, I've got my yellow, I'm going to do some colour mixing. So I'm going to get my blue. Okay, I just want to watch this. And what I'm going to do is over the top of the yellow, I'm going to put my blue. And look what happens. We end up with green. Green, exactly. So we know now, by doing this wee chalk experiment, that if you mix yellow and blue, you end up with green. What's wrong? There you have it. Just make it go around here. Make it smaller. Make your next apple smaller. You get one in there. You get two in here easily. Make them smaller. Caterpillar moves. You could even have it going up the page a little bit. Look at that one there. He's wiggling around. So you can actually have this kind of coming up the page or that going up the page as well. Don't worry about it. Right, so we've got green. And now, so Alex, you want to do your next one? Um, so I've mixed yellow and blue. So now let's go for yellow with the red and see what colour we make this time. Orange. You think it's going to be orange? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know about colour mixing though because you're a big P5, so yeah. you know all about it. So now I've gone for a little bit of the yellow. I'm going to put across some of the red on top. Maybe not putting enough yellow there, so I'm just going to mix a little bit more yellow. And yeah, I'm getting a really, really nice orange colour. So there you go. 
on. So we've managed to mix our primary colours and now we've got two secondary colours and there's only one combination left that we haven't done. And that, I think, is purple. It's purple. So how do we get purple, Alex? Um, blue and red. Blue and red. So we haven't done that combination yet. Oh, nice blue and green. green. It's only blue. No, it's blue and yellow. It looks good. Um, if you mix it green. together. Mm. Look, if you mix it together, you've got teal. I'm going to show Alex. Hansen, you got green. teal. Look at that. Teal. 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 Right, and that's basically where you've done your yellow. You could now do your red and you'll end up with an orange. Right, next up we have got the blue to go on. Oh, and <laughs> the red. Mine's a wee bit perfect. I've kind of done it a bit too straight across the page. I like how Harris is wiggling across the page a bit better. This looks like it's actually having a good crawl around the around the garden. That's a lovely purple you've made. Yeah. I like that. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. It's got the nicer red, I think, over there. So we've got a nice purple going on here for our last oh, go, circle for the body. Okay. Right, so our body's complete. We've got our purple, orange, green. Red, blue and yellow and actually what I have noticed that I've not really done is I maybe should have left a little bit for a tail so I've got a little bit of space here. Yeah, so I'm just going to do my purple, I want to do the purple that Harris just did so I'm going to do another wee one just on the end of the golden tail. So you've just got your orange to do. So how do you mix orange? Can you remember? What two colours need you? Yellow and something else. Good boy, good boy. Right, so we've got my body of my caterpillar done now. So next up, once we've got all of that done, we're going to add its legs, its eyes, patterns on its body, lots of interesting things. So at the minute, all you're doing for me, you're, don't think about it as a caterpillar. At the minute, I want you just to think about the roof circle. That's all you want to think. And if that happens, if you run out of space, you can kind of wiggle around the page or it can actually go in a wiggly line. It's up to you what way you want to do. Okay? Right, I'm just going to give Alex a few seconds. He's still got to do his orange and Harris is still doing his orange as well. So I'll leave them just for a few seconds just to finish it off. Which means, I'm assuming at home, you're still finishing that bit off as well. Okay. Now in the classroom, I'm noticing Alex keeps blowing his chalk dust. I would actually be telling everyone not to do that because wow. it might go in the person's face opposite them. So just be careful if you yeah, are doing that. Really it's okay at home, but if you're at school and you were doing this lesson, just be a bit more careful. Ah, this is done. Fantastic. Can I show the boys and girls? I need to wait for this part. So this is my P1 boy. Doing fantastic. He's done a great job. There we go. Right, so we are done with the chalks. Harris and I are done with the chalks. We're just waiting on Alex to hurry up and finish his orange. Alex, if you've joined us in the past, you will know that Alex is a perfectionist. He likes everything to be just so. Harris and I, we're a bit faster, aren't we? No, just yeah, like, don't go into that just yet. Don't go into that just yet. Yeah, okay. Right, so, while Alex is finishing off, me and Harris are ready to go, so I'm going to start talking to the boys and girls on the screen about what to do next, and then Harris is here to go. Right, so we're going to do a bit of printmaking now. Printmaking is quite a hard thing to do, or so people think at home, because they think they need fancy rollers, and they need polystyrene foam to carve into and stuff, but no, 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 no. You can easily do a bit of printmaking, relief printmaking at home, just with some found objects. So we had a bit of a reek about yesterday in the toy room. So we found things like a stickle brick. We found a bit of Lego. We've got a lot of Lego. Found this thing. I don't actually know what this is. I think it's for connecting two pens so you can yes. write with two pens at the same time. I don't know where it came from. Q-tip. We've got some pens that haven't had lids put on. Would have been you. You're very I don't good exist. Enough. You're hiding because it would have been you. No, so they that. have a really, Harris really nice shape mm -hmm. at the bottom. No, so better. you're looking for things that have got bumps. You're not wanting anything that's just smooth, just a big square that's smooth. You're wanting things that've got a texture. It's got a nerf bullet, which I'll need to scrub after this. Um, the lid from something. Alex was quite upset about this. A Roblox head. Mm -hmm. So I'm right for picking apart all those figures. Duplo, we've got bits of card in there, we've got Q-tips, we've got a really, really nice bit of Meccano. So next bit is going to be really, really, really experimental. Your challenge now is to think, hello, look who's there. Claire and Katie are on. Oh, that's 
nicely, you're happy, are your buddies on? Sorry, that distracted me there. Uh, so next up, what you're going to do is you're going to think about all the features that would make your row of circles into a caterpillar. So we need legs, we need antennae, we need a nose, we need eyes, and it would be nice as well to try and get some patterns on your circles, okay? So, have a wee experiment with all of this. Think about what would work best. You've got lots of paper around the outside edge, so if you want to have a wee play with the materials first to see what they do, or if you want to go and get a scrap bit of paper and try first, before you ruin your caterpillar, go for it. I've had a bit of practice doing this, so I'm just gonna go for it. So let's, first of all, where's that cardboard? Because I know from previous experience of doing our blossom trees that this is gonna give me a really, really nice straight edge. Now you can use any color of paint that you want. So this is my head on this side. Make sure I need to put that as the head hands, but that's his tail. That'd be the wrong way round. So I could use this straight cardboard to make some nice antenna. I thought it was a chubby caterpillar. I know, it could be. Here's the caterpillar. It just gives you a really, really oh. nice straight edge if you've not used cardboard before. So that'd be perfect for legs or the antennae. And um, we've also got the Meccano here. Oh, it's up to you what colours you choose. We oh, need to dip in the paint, sweetheart. It's up to you what colours you choose to do this. Um, I like the black because we've not used black yet. And we've also got white there and we've got a bit of blue as well. So you could use any colour that you want. This gets quite messy. So this is when you definitely need a painting shirt on or baby wipes to hand. And just be careful because one thing that often will happen in the class is people will speed at this point and they'll forget that that is the head. The head will not have legs coming out of it. So just be really, really super duper careful that you don't plonk in a leg in the middle of your head. If you do, you could always stick on another circle just to cover that up. So what else have we got? So how is she? Oh, you've done your face already. What could I make a nose with? Maybe a Q-tip? Mm -hmm. Just be, give me a perfect spot. There we go. Cute. Maybe make a wee face. So let's try. Maybe this would be a nice mask. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. Is it? Oh, nice. Like dip this in the white. Maybe make he could look like he's got some teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite good fun. I love doing printmaking. Right, I need some eyes. Mm. Some big mm. eyes for my guy. Mm. Cannot wait to see what you guys all come up with at home because you'll probably be doing totally different things mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. You might have different colours of paint. You might be using um chalks or using pencils and using the Ro Roblox head. Mm -hmm. It gives you a really, really nice pattern. So inside all of your circles now, I would love it if you could try and put some patterns in just to make it a bit more interesting. So use up all of your tools inside. And if something doesn't work, don't worry about it, you know? So normally in the classroom, what I would now do is leave these to dry and cut them all out and make a big display. So they work really, really well if you want to place them around a notice board. Um, next week, we're going to do some butterflies to accompany, there's a baby wipe down there, to accompany these. So that's normally what I would also do in the classroom is do some butterflies next. So next week, if you want to join in, that's the plan for next week. Be for them white. Cute. Mm. Oh, so sweet. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Harris. What about some antennae? Because always have antennae. Maybe you could make lines. Have you used this? The Duplo? Oh, the Duplo. Black on there. So Try that because that would give you a lovely line. And I would love to if you could do some more patterns on your body. That's it, perfect! Oh, and I like that. And maybe some more patterns inside your body with other things. We could try the Duplo on its own. Or that way. Can I use this? I liked what you did there with that. I didn't even think of doing that. You just did some squares. That looks great. Oh, like this antenna. Oh. Um, also, another nice thing to do that I did on yesterday's one is I used some tools just to go around the outside of the circles, oh, just to sort nice. of give them a wee border, which can look quite nice. So you could maybe go around some of your circles. I'm done. You're done? Okay. Do you want to go and wash your hands? Because you're a bit messy. There we go. Yeah. Peace. <laughs>
feeling Mrs. Hardy and Mrs. Oh. McDonald would probably back me up on this. I've got a funny feeling that Harris is always the first one finished. Um, right, me and Alex would sit for ages, wouldn't we? Mm. You and me, we would just sit for ages tinkering about with this sort of stuff. So if you are a Aberdeen boys and girls, this would be great for keeping Mrs. Hardy happy today. Um, for her printmaking project that she's set for you all. If you're a Dunbarney one, this is actually something we would be doing in the classroom anyway at this time of year as a lesson. It would normally take about 50 minutes because it takes a lot of preparation, a lot of tidy up at the end. And we would always cut them out as well, so I'll let you have a wee look at that one. Okay, just so you can see it. Okay, so we've got that one. Hi, this is wee cute guy here. It could do with a few more patterns on it, but he seems quite happy. And I've got Alex's here as well. So as per usual, I will post this afterwards, um, after we get cleaned up that is, and let you have a wee look at what else we could do. As per usual, please, if you've been taking part, send me a wee photo so I can make a wee folder. It helps because I love seeing what you've been doing. It gives me some ideas for the future if I was ever going to teach this lesson again. Give me feedback as well. Was it easy? Was it too hard? Was there any bits that were too tricky? And also give me some feedback um, and some suggestions. Two seconds, baby. Some suggestions of lessons that you would like to do over the next couple of weeks. Next week, we are going to finish this off by doing some butterflies. Hopefully after that, we'll maybe have a look at doing some flowers. That's what we love to do after all. Um, we can maybe look at some bumblebees as well, maybe do some honeycomb pictures. Um, it's coming into summer, we might do some beach scenes, some boats. So yeah, have a wee think about what it is that you maybe need to do with your class or maybe you need to do for your schoolwork or something you find tricky. Tomorrow is insect based again for primary four to seven. But tomorrow is much more exciting, it's much more creative, it's much more interesting. Um, why are your fingers getting involved? Yes. Harris, what is it? I'm trying to say goodbye to everyone. What is it? Me? You're hungry. I'll come in a minute. He's almost hungry. I don't know how much money we're spending on snacks at the minute. For him. Yeah, for both of you. Right, so yeah, so um, if there's anything you want to do, just please let me know. And yeah, send me the photos once they're finished so we can make a wee folder. Lots of love to you all. Enjoy Monday. Oh, I was, to I was sorry, I got distracted again. Tomorrow, Primary 4 to 7 are doing um, symmetrical neem insects. It's a cracker. I've not done it for ages. You don't need any resources, by the way, for this. It's totally easy. So this would be great for the people that don't have lots of um, artwork at home, art stuff at home. So you, not food. So you need just a piece of paper, preferably A4, but if it's bigger or smaller, honestly won't matter, a pencil and a window. A window tomorrow as well you need to make it symmetrical so it's a brilliant lesson and you can do this numerous times it makes brilliant gift cards as well for people so yeah i better go and do the sample actually i've not done the sample one yet so lots of love i'm going to wrap it up now and um, enjoy the rest of your day i'm away to go and feed harris <laughs> standing like a, a dog begging at the door right now and i'll speak to you later bye bye